Thank you so much, Wendy. And welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm broadcasting to you from uh, the summer house in Denmark because we have homeschooling right now. So in order to make sure that I got a quiet space during this webinar, uh, you can see that I'm in the summer house right now. So I'm going to talk to you about methods that I use when I'm dealing with critical projects and especially when I'm dealing with the communication between the different stakeholders. So just need to get the browsing to work. So one of the reasons for creating this presentation was that in September I gave a presentation about hybrid project management, a methodology that I use quite a lot especially because some of the complex and critical projects that I'm dealing with is usually quite large, uh, not only by nature and functionality, but also by the amount of resources and stakeholders engaged. And one of the output from that presentation was an interest in the method and techniques that I was using. So I highly recommend that if you have not seen the hybrid project management presentation from September, that you go in and have a view of that one. And this one is kind of like an outburst of a, a single slide that I had where a lot of the questions was related to that single slide in the, in the September presentation. So one of the things that I see when, we're, when I'm dealing with, uh, with critical or, or complex projects, and especially those that doesn't kind of like go the right way or become challenge projects, is uh, setting realistic expectation. I, and I clearly remember reading in the 2002 book, uh, Quality Software Project Management, a statement about that the single most important task of a project is setting realistic expectation. And that unrealistic expectation based on inaccurate estimates of the single largest cost of software failure. Now, taking that statement into today's modern world, and using the uh, Sandwich report chaos and looking at what the Sandwich has produced of a report uh, in the past, you can see that even though we have introduced a lot of different methodologies and a lot of different processes like Agile, Scrum, etc., we still have a lot of our projects which is challenged and even have a, a great number of projects that is still failing. So if you look at the failed number of projects, we actually still have one fifth of the projects failing. And that means that they will never ever deliver uh, any functionality or value uh, to the end user, where we have challenge projects that usually deliver less functionality or less value to the user than expected or doesn't meet the expectation from a budget or schedule perspective. There is a lot of different techniques that you can use, but what I'm going to highlight is the setting expectation techniques that I'm using. Uh, and I'm going to try, because in this uh, world that we're living in right now, it's not always possible to bring people together. So I'm going to try to, you know, use the methodology, tell you about how I use the methodology, but also tell you about how it can fit into a, a virtual situation. So my experience as a critical project manager is that one of the things that you need to look into in order to not have a challenge project or a failed project is improving the requirements gathering process. Ensure that you have a common understanding all the way kind of like from user technology, uh, design specification, test and acceptance. And one of the ways that you need to do that is by improving the communication and the decision making. Uh, Spanish report and PMI false report right now states that one of the most, you know, critical part is scope management and decision making, uh, and especially, you know, up the chain to leadership, etc. In order for a complex or critical project to succeed, you also need to ensure that you have a strong team spirit between all stakeholders so that the communication flows uh, seamlessly and to support team on documentation and use of the right methods and documentation of agreements. And that is all the things that I'm going to talk about uh, today in the uh, methods and uh, techniques that I'm, I'm using. For me, a preferred method is something where the gathering of this information is meaningful and useful. Not only when you gather the information, but also when you use the information. So when 
a lot of projects they start very very you know uh, successful out in gathering requirements, gathering specification, making drawings, etc. But it seems like that these uh, items that is created in the beginning of the life cycle has a tendency of you know disappearing uh, over the time. So the method that we're using needs to be meaningful and useful. It needs to be defined and simple to understand. And it needs to support the innovation and creativity uh, that are used in the beginning. And we need to make sure that they are traceable during the life cycle of whatever task that we endeavor. I'm going to talk uh, about these six items, so communication and decision making. I'm going to talk a little bit about equipment. Um, so the things that I bring with me, I, I got almost like uh, uh, this bag with, with all the stuff that I bring when I have a team uh, meeting uh, that consists of different things. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about Lego Serious Play, which is a way of gathering goals and, uh, and make decision about what is the objective of, of what we're doing and what is uh, the purpose of where we are. I'm going to talk about Kinevin or uh, it's called Kinevin, Cinefin, uh, Kinevin because it's a village word. And I'm going to talk about dot loading. I'm going to talk about future backwards. And I'm going to talk about function point analysis, which is also a, a methodology that I use quite a lot. So let's start with communication and decision making. So when we have the optimal size of six to eight people, the communication lines is quite doable. But the minute we have more stakeholders and the more we get, it becomes more and more complicated. And we need to be aware about this fact of the Brooks Law of communication, that the more communication we have, for the more people we have, the more difficult the communication becomes. We also need to remember that when we when we have these teams of users, of leaders, of tech guys, of uh, nerdy people, of project managers, scrum masters, product owner, etc., we also have all these different opinions and inputs. We all have different perspectives, personalities, skills, and we are all different resource types. And we need to make sure that everybody is heard and all considerations and all input is, is taken into consideration. The communication line is, is kind of like difficult in the sense that there's one way of communicating when we're talking about the circle of the team, so the team that we're working in there. Uh, we can have team meetings and team thinking, and sometimes we need to make sure that we have a facilitator in order to ensure that everybody is heard. But we also need to bear in mind that a lot of the organization is not, you know, uh, an agile organization, it's a hierarchical organization. So we need to be aware about that we have these kind of like levels of understanding and level of perspective. And for that reason... Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.